how's it going everyone so we're now about a almost a quarter of the way into the 2024 uk general election campaign and i thought i'd do a video talking about everything that's happened so far um all the shit that's gone on and kind of a little bit about why we got here even though it's kind of old news at this point um and then maybe some predictions and who i'm voting for so start off about you know when the election was called it kind of just came out of nowhere um I think there are a few reasons why he did it in the end. Things are only going to get worse. You know, things c can only get worse, um, to paraphrase the song. And it's like, is he going to call an election now or wait when people are more pissed off and desperately want one and do it in the, in the winter when the NHS is worse, when energy bills are higher because, you know, people got to pay more in the winter anyway. And it's like, it's just cold and depressing. And it's like... Okay, if I'm going to go out, you know, go out while the Euros are on, you know, go off to California afterwards. Um, you know, the inflation is looks like it's coming down, even though prices have already gone up for good and wages, you know, have been stagnant since the Tories came to power. So it's not really relevant. Um, and also the fact that Rishi, look, it looked like his party was increasingly going to, you know, pull the chopper on him. So he's like, All right, election. It's, you know, you like it? You like surprises? Here you go. Election, July the 4th. And that video or image of him just talking while things can only get better is playing in the background and he's just being drenched in the rain. That kind of just perfectly encapsulates this whole government. Just just completely unprepared, completely brought on itself and just a complete joke. Now let's get into the actual election campaign. We're going to start off with... Uh, we're going to start off from like the smallest, most boring parties and then move it up. First of all, it has to be mentioned, of all elections, this is probably the one where we've got the most candidates standing. Like of so many parties, the Greens are standing candidates in every seat. So a reform. Um, I don't even know if UKIP did that. They probably did, to be fair. Um, you know, there's even like like you know, the smaller joke parties are fielding more candidates this time. And there's a lot of independents standing, especially left-wing independents. Um, and we will get to that in due course. First of all, SNP campaign. Their party has kind of been just, like, blowing up a little bit. Like, not on Tory scale, but the fact they've been in power in Scotland for so long um, and, like the fact that they've kind of been in a bit of a mess internally and they've just got a new leader that no one's heard of when this election was called. It it doesn't help them that much in Scotland. Like, they're probably going to lose the popular vote in Scotland. And it's funny because Labour and Starmer are going to take all the credit for it when it's like, things have worked out. Like, if I had the luck of Keir Starmer, man. But we will get to that. But, um... I mean, the SNP, they're fine. Maybe I'd vote for them if I lived in Scotland, but they're not a concern for most of us. Same goes for Plaid Cymru. They'll probably still get their four seats or whatever. So, um, yeah, that's kind of all there is to say about them. After that, there's the Lib Dems. Ed Davey has just spent this election using it as a chance to just fall into the Lake District, go on some water slides... And also ride his bike around. For Lib Dem standards, that's a decent general election campaign. They're, they're, they're only really trying to get, like, Tory votes in marginal seats. Like, they're not really doing anyone any harm this election. So, you know, that's that's kind of all there is to say about them. They did drop, like, their first policy, which is, like, free school meals for primary school kids. Which is funny because it's, like... It's a Corbyn 2017 manifesto policy and the Lib Dems have adopted it and it's like, it's actually good and Labour now aren't actually doing it and neither are the Tories. So it's actually, you know, I, I'm not I'm not going to rag on the Lib Dems this election. They're kind of a bit of a mean party at this point, but, you know, they get by. They'll probably increase their seat totals at the end of this election. Getting into more controversial territory now, we of course have Reform, which were formerly the Brexit party. Uh, and as I mentioned, this election, they're standing in every seat as opposed to just um, like some like they stood down in all Tory seats in 2019, which, by the way, that endorsement really helped them. If you look at the polls, the Tories would not have won a majority in that election if it wasn't for that. I've never heard anyone mention that, but I remember it so vividly at the time. I was thinking about it the other day and it's like. 
that's just you know a little thing that kind of got lost to history but they're standing in this election their main campaign seems to be the tories are not tories anymore apparently or the tories are so bad even reform hate them and so they're like vote for us we're the real Tories. And also Nigel Farage is on TV every bloody day saying slightly racist stuff about Muslims. I don't actually know why he's on the news so much because he's not even standing in this election. He's not even the leader. You know who hasn't been getting airtime? The Green Party. So the Green Party are actually the party I will be voting for in this election because I'm not particularly happy with the direction that Labour has gone into. Um under Starmer and some of the things they've been doing and we'll get to that and some of their more lackluster policies and the Greens kind of have all my values they're not perfect on everything but it's more of just a protest vote and also even if you do think that Labour winning this election is really important I'm telling you they are going to win this election they are going to win this election and one of these drums is like broken you can't actually you can't actually see it there's like a hole there a break another one of those drums i'll just i'll just break it with my hand um if the tories win this election they're not going to win this election so you can vote green with no fear like just knowing that the tories are not are not gonna beat them and i do think labor winning is ultimately a good thing but i will get to that in a minute even though i'm not particularly happy with them in general but the greens I'm voting for them. You should vote for them. They've got good left-wing policies, you know, uh, you know ending privatisation of the NHS, nationalising utilities, a fair tax system, you know, no an end to austerity and supporting peace in Palestine and, you know, ceasefire, all that good stuff. Let's get to the party that's been in charge of all of this for the past 14 years, the Tories. So the Tories... Um, They've kind of not had the greatest election campaign start in history. I think it's fair to say, obviously, starting off with, you know, Rishi making that announcement, you know, pouring rain with the Labour anthem blaring in the background. And because he briefed the press, it meant all the protesters had time to, you know, prepare and get all their shit together um, in order to do that. Honestly, all I can say about the Conservative campaign so far is like Rishi Sunak's team must hate him because it's like the amount of stupid shit that they've that he's been like just doing like little just like memeable stuff that just it it looks it looks like a joke it just looks like a complete clown show of a political campaign from a dying political party that's just running out of steam and has just got no distance left to run Obviously, there was a big policy that Rishi announced that everyone's been talking about, national service. Uh, you either have to do 12 months joining the military or you do one month, one day a month, one weekend, I don't know, volunteering in your local community. It's like, it's like, yeah, the country's gone to shit. There's young people probably have the worst you know, are in the worst position in this country and they're in worse position in this country than even other countries that have similar economic troubles like that, like house prices are such a joke. The environment is collapsing. Uh, There's shit in the rivers if we want to swim in them. Food is a joke. We'll probably never earn as much as our parents. And the Tories are like, oh yeah, go join the military even though we don't have enough people in the military to train you and you're going to be leaving after 12 months anyway. And if you're volunteering in your local community, it's like, like who actually cares about this? Because I saw polls and there's a decent amount of people that support this, but it hasn't boosted the Tories in the polls at all. And this is specifically aimed at older people that never even did national service in the first place because it ended in what, like 1963? And it's just like boomer baiting and it hasn't even worked because the Tories have gone down in the polls. Interesting fact about the polls is that the Tories, Rishi Sunak's personal favourability was at like an all-time low or close to an all-time low when they called this election. And it actually went up slightly afterwards and then it went and now it's gone back down. And, you know, in every election, I think Corbyn started 2017 and 19 with pretty low approval ratings. And even in then, especially in 17, they rose, you know, in other elections, when the candidate's popularity has fallen over the campaign, it hasn't fallen to as low as Sunak is, which is like it's at minus 50 right now. And it's getting worse. That That's kind of unheard of. 
that start at such a low point in an election and and like not go up at all. Um, so that's kind of been the conservative campaign. There's also been, you know, a bit more boomer bait in like the quadruple lock on pensions, which is like an extra 30p a day. Like, yeah, that's really that's really going to help. Cheers, Richie. All of this is just they clearly know they're going to lose. It's more about maybe, you know, shore up the base and lose a bit less badly. But it doesn't even seem to be working. So I'm kind of surprised they've gone with this whole strategy. I will say it's a good thing they probably will bring it up. Like, I'm pleasantly surprised that they haven't gone with all the culture war, what anti-woke shit, because, like, no one would care about that. And I think the Tories have already been going on this for a few months, and they kind of realised that no one really cared and like even even if people did agree which it isn't really particularly it's like on immigration they can't point to a success there and like you know with the actual woke stuff like talking about transgender stuff it's like no one actually cares apart from a small group of people anyway that's been pretty much the conservative election campaign and you may think you know with all those dumb little things that they've been doing over the past week you know that's the worst start to any election campaign ever. They've had their week, and now it's and Labour's like, hold on, hold on, hold my bit. It's my turn. So Labour kind of just started off the election by with Starmer playing to a random stadium with about ten people behind him, and then as the election gone on, he randomly just started purging left wing people out of the cabinet, and he parachuted this Luke Akehurst guy, who who is like an ultra pro-Zionist, pro-Israel guy. And meanwhile, they're suspending MPs from for tweets from 2014 because they said that the Israel lobby is bad or something. It's like, and like, oh, it's anti-Semitic to talk about the Israeli lobby when it's like, this guy is literally proof of it and you just parachuted him in. Um, and obviously, um, La- one of my biggest problems with Labour is like they're not going far with any of their policies. GB Energy is not a publicly owned energy company. It's it doesn't actually supply energy. It's more of an, a publicly owned kind of bank to use the private companies. But you don't get any of the benefits because you're not actually nationalising the companies themselves. Same with the NHS. The Labour's policy on the NHS is kind of. Uh, oh, we're going to do more PFI, which is like there's why there's so much waste in the NHS, because we're paying these private companies to do the same things that the NHS doctors do. And they employ NHS doctors for like this, for like they give them more money. So no one works for the NHS. And instead of giving nurses a pay rise because they've gone back on strike, by the way, like a day before the election, um, we just uh, oh, we're just going to kick the can down the road, which is ironic because Starmer's slogan for a while was like, no more sticking plaster politics. But it's like, that is exactly what you're doing. While the Tories, it's just like, we're just going to like let the sewage run and we're just, just through the rivers. Literally, we're just going to like destroy everything. And then Labour's policy is like, uh, maybe we'll do something about it. Like Labour haven't even said they're going to tax the rich anymore. They... They've, they've literally said, we can't afford to tax the rich. That makes no sense. It's like, you're just another shade of the Tories. So yeah, that's kind of an issue with the Labour Party. Uh, main reason I'm not supporting them, or the one of the big reasons was one, you know, that completely ruled it out was like their support for Israel. And some of the things Starmer said there, it was like, okay, you're definitely not getting my vote. The other thing is their treatment of the left. So this stuff with Diane Abbott, she's actually been allowed to stand now because it clearly looked bad for Starmer. Um, and then, you know, like this Pfizer Shaheen, which I was alluding to earlier, talking about that person that got you know suspended. They're parachuting in these like briefcases. It's like the guy is just an empty suit like Sunak, at least Tony Blair, who was also on Starmer's side of the Labour Party. You know, the Blairite, the right wing of the Labour Party. At least he actually had some personality of like what he wanted to do. And I feel like this is becoming a little bit too harsh. Like I'm talking more about the Labour Party than the Conservative Party. But I think it's become clear the Conservatives are a joke and everyone knows that. But with the Labour Party, they're just about to come into power. They haven't had chance to do the damage Um and I think it's, you know, we should really vote green to kind of give them a bit of a protest or, as I was about to say, independent. 
Um, Corbyn is another example of someone that's been treated pretty badly. And I'm glad that he is standing as an independent. There's also Andrew Feinstein is standing in Starmer's seat. It's not going to happen, but it would be so funny if Starmer won a landslide victory and lost his own seat. Like, I mean, there's actually a good chance that Sunak himself loses his seat. I do think Labour will win this election. And ultimately, I don't actually think it's going to be close. I think there will be a drop in turnout. Um, and I think some will have a bit of a honeymoon period after he's elected, but I think that won't last. And that's partly because the atmosphere like this is happening during the Euros, you know, in you know the middle of summer and stuff like that. And there's a bit of optimism, supposedly, in the air. But I don't really feel it. This is where I think after the election and why I think some good things can happen. So first of all, the Tories are going to lose pretty badly. I don't think at this point there's going to be a hung parliament. But if if there was, and you know, even if there isn't, what I can see happening is people kind of seeing Starmer's policies and being like, "Oh, this guy is not really doing much better than the Tories were." Like, okay, maybe he's a little bit better because he got like the VAT on private schools and the sixteen, seventeen-year-olds can vote, which is actually a good policy. I was pleasantly surprised by that. Uh, and then what's the other one like the non-dom tax it's like those two taxes the VAT and non-doms they don't raise enough money to sort stuff out and all the other stuff is like short-term stuff like PFI again um, the private finance stuff that like Blair did with the NHS and then the Tories have obviously expanded privatization and privatized everything that wasn't already privatized you know but Starmer this is just more of the neoliberal experiment, failed neoliberal experiment we've had since Thatcher. And I think what will happen is that there could really be a, like a left wing progressive movement that, that rises up. There's against Starmer and against the Tories, obviously, because I don't think they're going to be getting voted in back soon. Obviously, there is a bit of a risk that, um, you know, it could there could be a very right wing party that kind of begins to rise and reform UK could kind of get a bit of a rebrand and a bit of a, you know, polish up, get some more younger faces in there and it could begin to rise. Um, but overall, I think the Tories for this election are completely cooked because if you look at their polling in some polls, they're actually polling behind the greens among the under 40s. That's not like young students. That's working age people. It'll be interesting to see if the Tories ever win another election because I remember distinctly thinking in 2019 after Labour lost the Tories have won this time this will be the last election they lose maybe I was right they would have to have some serious makeover if they wanted to but I guess time will tell um the other thing is that if there is a coalition government there won't be but if there is one with say the Lib Dems in Labour then if the Lib Dems push for a referendum on proportional representation um, I think it could win, by the way, uh, then, you know, we'd be able to vote in left wing parties without having to tactically vote. And people will say, oh, you know, right wing parties can rise and get seats then. Yeah, that is true. But we've kind of had that for the past few years anyway. I don't know if you look at the government. So that's my general opinion. I think the turnout is going to be pretty low. It's not going to be massive, but like massive drop. But it will be a drop on 2019. I'm almost certainly convinced of that. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see if the Tories do worse than 2010 Gordon Brown. I think they will. I think they'll get below 30%, but I could be wrong. This is still early in the election campaign. And I think Labour will get about probably similar sort of vote share Boris Johnson got in the last election. But in terms of raw votes, I think it will actually be less than 2017 any of the two parties got, like, Corbyn or Theresa May. Um, and I think part of the turnout reduction is just the fact the election is already a foregone conclusion, kind of. I know, you know, people say, oh, don't, you know, don't get too cocky. Anything could happen. But like, I seriously doubt that the Tories actually do well in this election. I could be wrong, though. Um, and the other is, you know, the voter ID stuff. And which, which by the way, Labour aren't even going to oppose for some reason and uh you know there's not really much enthusiasm out there you know people hate the tories a lot of people will vote labor against the tories but 
I can't see the sort of enthusiasm that was, you know, around in 1997. If you look at some polls from back then, Tony Blair was loved. Keir Starmer is like in the 30s, in the low 30s. And he's been given like the easiest media ride in history. Uh, so those are some of my thoughts. But it'd be interesting to see how, you know, the campaign carries on. Uh, I'm going on holiday ne next week anyway, so I won't be doing a video covering the first debate or whatever. I hope there's a debate between all the big parties because the BBC have invited all the leaders, but I don't know if that actually will happen. Um, and, you know, maybe I'll do a video in like a month at the end of the election campaign, kind of talking about everything that's happened and just sort of another update. And maybe I'll do a video after the election. But if not... Uh, Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, vote green or, you know, if if maybe there's certain circumstances in your constituency. But I think generally vote green. And, yeah, that's pretty much all i got to say. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, you know, all that. Follow me. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of pretty much it. So, yeah, see you in the next video. Everybody wants to know what I would do if I did win. I guess we'll never know.